Welcome back to another video on Finance Value TV. And in today's video, we have quite an interesting topic. Now, a lot of people have been speculating on whether or not the US housing market is going to crash. And to be honest with you, I understand where the frustration and where the speculation is currently coming from. Because as you all know, right now, we're in some pretty uncertain times, which does mean that even the most well-knowledgeable financial investors and financial analysts can't exactly predict where the market is going to go, especially the housing market. Although in this video, I kind of would like to present sort of an alternative view viewpoint on the US housing market. You see, right now, there are lots of media outlets and a lot of people who are speculating that the US housing market is most likely going to crash late 2021 or mid 2021. And if not, it's probably going to be early 2021. And to be honest, I think that's quite an overstatement because if we look at some of the statistics, which I'm going to get into in this video, you're going to see that the statistics and what people are saying actually don't really match up that well. And to be honest, I think overall that there's quite a lot of fear and there's certain factors that aren't being taken into account that really should be if you enjoy this type of content, make sure you guys stick to the end because this one is going to be definitely very interesting. So here we go. So recently, I tried to look in depth at what's actually going on with the housing market, not just what everyone's speculating and not just what a loads of people with a lot of fear in their minds are actually saying. So let's look at the first point. Number one is that the high unemployment rates people are seeing right now is actually very, very okay. And the reason I say it's okay is because it's not that bad relative to the overall population. If the unemployment rate is at 10%, which it currently is at, that does still mean that 90% of people who want to work are working. You see, the pandemic unemployment has actually disproportionately affected the renters who aren't candidates for home ownership in the near future. Yes, there are plenty of examples of people who were so close to buying a home before the pandemic wiped them out, but that's the exception, not the rule. So what I'm trying to say is that like, even though you're seeing massive levels of unemployment and you're seeing that lots of people are out of work, this doesn't mean that everyone's out of work. A lot of people are still going to work. And those who are actually out of employment, those people aren't the people who are actually going to buy homes. If people are actually going to buy homes, that means they are probably going to have a good job and a good level of savings. So for them to be unemployed so soon, it would likely mean that they aren't in an exactly high paying position or a job which gives them enough to buy a house. So when you're looking at the unemployment stats, yes, of course, large majorities of people are unemployed, but people are gonna look at this and think, oh my God, if all these people are unemployed, they're gonna fall behind in their mortgages, houses are gonna be up for sale, and then we're gonna be in another recession. Well, that's just not the case. You see, the type of people who lost their jobs weren't exactly the people who were planning to buy homes. I mean, there were some people who, yes, were probably planning to buy a home before the pandemic wiped them out. But once again, like I said before, that's the exception, it's not the rule. The majority of people who are unemployed were mainly like low parts of the workforce, I would say. So I guess, yes, you know, everyone was affected, but the large majority isn't going to affect the housing market that much. The next point, Point is that the Federal Open Market Committee actually put the interest rates to near zero, meaning that mortgage rates are at the lowest levels in history. Right now, you can get a 15-year mortgage at 2%, which is the long-term average inflation rate. In other words, you can borrow money for 15 years and pay an effective rate of nothing over the lifespan of the loan. 30-year mortgages aren't much higher. You can get a 2.5% rate without paying an arm and a leg in points. So it's basically showing us that even though yes, you know, there are people unemployed. The Federal Reserve has once again helped out the economy. When they put these interest rates so low, this actually does mean that, you know, the average person like you or me can pick up a mortgage on a house whilst the interest rates are actually so low, which means over the course of the loan, we're actually going to be paying so much less, which does mean that it's even more attractive right now to buy a house than it's ever been because the interest rates probably won't be this low again unless another pandemic happens or unless something else happens to the economy where the Federal Reserve has to step in once again. Number three, the long-term trends in real estate haven't changed due to the pandemic. Smaller homes are actually going more quickly than larger homes. The baby boomers who are nearing or in retirement no longer have use for the large homes they've previously been in. They're buying finisher homes, for example, starter homes for millennials and the older Gen Z. For these people, downsizing means reducing expenses overall. So pandemic-related unemployment would only encourage them to buy homes. So once again, we're seeing that the market trends are actually pushing people to buy a home. The baby boomers who are actually nearing their retirement are actually going to be buying more homes now because they're going to be downsizing. So it's definitely, definitely interesting to see, but we're going to move on to the next point. Point number four is that lending practices were actually tightened a lot in the wake of the 2008 housing bubble. People looking for mortgages saw the hell that was paid for buying more than they could afford. So they didn't seek the types of insane mortgages that they would have sought 10 to 20 years prior. The combination of these factors actually means that people who were homeowners who were affected by 
the pandemic unemployment are actually in a better position to make their mortgage payments since they're less likely to be stretched thin. You see, the government action from March to July made it much easier for people impacted by COVID to stay in their homes without falling behind on their rent and mortgages. Staying current on rent means that small-time landlords are less likely to fall behind on their rents, which overall means that everything stays kind of relative. Point number five is that inventory is actually low because people are buying more than they are selling. The ultimate effect of the points that I've discussed before is that the first time home buyers are taking advantage of the very low interest rate to buy real estate, while the existing homeowners are holding off on selling. The second home purchases are extremely strong. People with actual disposable income who would normally take, you know, holidays and stuff, they can't really do like those things anymore. So there's no telling when the international borders are going to open again. So they're pretty much just going to be buying up homes in resort areas, which kind of ripples throughout the entire market. So the market can go in any direction over the next year. and removing borrower protections could result in an uptick in foreclosures which would actually increase the available inventory and reduce the overall prices. So what happens is you know the government stops helping out as much and then pretty much what happens is people foreclose on their homes because they can't afford them anymore and with all these new homes on the market well you know the prices are just gonna go down. So it's simple supply and demand. see saving rates are among the highest ever because people literally can't find places to spend their money given that everywhere pretty much remains closed so that could result in continued housing market strength because everyone is going to have to spend money on their houses which they got to stay inside number three being a renewed spike in covid cases which is once again going to force shutdowns in various locations that could actually depress the demand for real estate although a sustained decline in cases could actually increase the demand to be honest right Right now, nobody does know exactly what's going to happen because we don't know if COVID is going to come back. We don't know if it's going to mutate. We don't know if it's going to go away completely. We don't know if the vaccine's even going to work. What we do know, though, is that the housing market isn't that bad, to be honest. I mean, if let's say, for example, any of the scenarios I talked about does happen, it's not like the market is going to flip completely to one polar opposite. The market isn't going to go to a very, very extreme where housing is going to be completely unaffordable. And the market isn't going to go to extreme where houses are completely affordable. I would definitely say that the market is probably going to remain maybe just a little bit better or worse and i definitely think that there's too much fear in the air right now and a lot of speculation that's making people say otherwise let us know what you think down in the comment section below do you think it's actually as bad as people are saying it is or do you think it's just